Hello everybody, another day, another Mondayo question. If you could see my YouTube inbox, you'd understand how many comments I get on a daily basis. And believe me, I am not the best person at trying to reply to all these comments. I'm lacking in a lot of ways there, but I'm trying. I know I've got to get in there and get them comments answered. Providing that is, I can even understand what the question is. And sometimes that's bloody difficult. But anyway, I was trolling through my comments the other day and I come across this particular comment. And you know what, I stood there at work in the middle of the workshop and I was almost pissing myself laughing. The way he had wrote it, I just thought it was funny. So this comment is from a guy called Frenchy XVI. By the way, isn't XVI Latin, Latin numerals? So X is a 10, V is a five and I is one. That's Frenchy 26. Not that flipping learning any Latin's done me any bloody good in life. But anyway, let's see what Frenchies wrote. Hi, I have a 2017 Mondeo, two litre TDCI, 210 PS, with 75,000 miles on the clock. When driving around 50 to 60 miles per hour, sometimes when I accelerate up to 70, 80 miles per hour, the car goes into limp mode. So let me picture this. You're on the motorway, there's a douchebag in front of you, hogging the centre lane, and you say, I'm gonna get past this knob. So you're like, Bruh! and just as you pull up alongside him, your car takes a flipping dump, and it's like, shit, pull back over. The car goes into limp mode. It says, check manual on the dashboard. It bloody would say check manual on the dashboard, wouldn't it? And do you know what the manual would tell you if you went down that route? The manual would say to you, check your nearest Ford dealer. The car is still on, but I cannot accelerate anymore. So, I have to turn off the engine, turn it back on, then the problem disappears. On these Mark 5 Mondeos, generally speaking, if your car goes into limp mode or reduced power mode, you can pull over by the side of the road, switch the engine off, switch it back on, I don't really want to say it, but you probably could switch the engine off while you're traveling down the motorway, but you don't really want to try it. It depends the situation you're in. But once you've switched the ignition off and back on again, the fault will be gone, unless it is a permanent, permanent fault there, in which case you'll be stuck in flipping limp mode. But anyway, you've cleared the code by switching the engine off and back on again, and you can drive off again. That's the way it works. So anyway, let's carry on with what he's got to say. I have brought the car to a Ford and to a Ford approved garage and to a friend's garage. Well, you've certainly been round the houses there, haven't you, Frenchy? <laughs> Ford said that there is nothing wrong with my car and charged me £180 to get it back after doing nothing and using a quarter of my fuel tank. Well, look on the bright side. At least you had £180 worth of the experience of walking into their glamorous showroom. Ford approved garage said they had no idea. Friends garage said sell it. It will be someone else's problem. I don't really want to admit this, but I can certainly think of a couple of cars. I would like to be somebody else's problem. So here is my question, Alan. Do you know what is going on? I really love my Mondeo and want to keep it. Before I even try to answer that, there's an update. I forgot to mention, I have changed the alternator and battery 3,000 miles ago at 72,000 miles. The car did not get a service since I own it as I have only driven 6,000 miles and it was done not long before I bought the car. So, that's it. That is all the information I have on this particular car. From what Frenchy tells us, he's owned the car for about 6,000 miles. He had a battery and alternator fitted a few thousand miles back, and he says the car was serviced before he bought it. Now, whether it was serviced or not, we don't know. So we've got to have some kind of checking procedure in order to find the answer to his fault. Now firstly, if you can picture the conditions at which the car is actually going into limp mode, can be a great help. And from what he's telling us, He's doing 50, 60 miles an hour, probably in top gear on the motorway. He accelerates and that's when it takes a dump. That tells me a lot because the fuel system, 
when he's putting his foot down in top gear, he's asking for a lot more fuel. He's putting the engine under load. He's putting the fuel system under load. And you've got to remember, the fuel system in these cars, they have sensors on them. They have to have a specific amount of pressure in like in the fuel rail. If that pressure drops outside of its limits, then it will take a dump. But we'll come to that. So anyway, what I would say is, the first thing we need to do is plug a diagnostic tool into the car and read the engine ECU codes. Now we can't do that because one, the car isn't here, and number two, we don't know what the codes are anyway. Frenchy hasn't told me, and the garages that checked his car probably read the codes and cleared them, and probably didn't tell him anyway. So, <laughs> so we're kind of in the dark here, but I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna take a pretty educated guess here that the codes would relate to fuel metering or low fuel pressure. If they were high fuel pressure codes, I'd be screaming, ECU! But I doubt it, that's a one in a thousand chance. More than likely, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're gonna have low fuel pressure codes in your engine ECU. So, I'm gonna run with that. <laughs> Step two, where do we go from here? We've got low fuel pressure codes in our ECU. Now, you haven't had the car serviced since you've owned it. You don't know the person before who serviced it, whether they've done a proper job. Let's talk about diesel fuel for a start. It's not really diesel fuel anymore, is it? It's a concoction of flipping chemicals put together. And the fuel filter, which is your first port of call, on these particular cars, it's a very small filter and they do not take long to clog up. And I can tell you now, I've had some of these Mark 5 Mondeos with the fuel filters clogged up in 15,000 miles, believe it or not. They get black and horrible and the fuel can't get through the filter. So that is the first thing I would do now. I would remove the fuel filter and have a look at it. If it's clean, then the person who serviced it before has done a good job. But you know what, you know what, when someone's selling a car, they don't really want to spend any money on it, so they might have skipped the filter, you know. And the filter could be completely black and clogged up with shit. Well, with this diesel fuel, because it's not, very, <laughs> it's not very good, and it clogs these filters up. And I'll, I'll tell you something, I could compare a Ford Transit, which has a flipping great big filter in it, they'll last like 70, 80,000 miles. And these Mark 5 more days, they've got this piddly little fuel filter, and I tell you, they don't last long. I change them like every 20,000 miles at the most. But anyway, getting away from that, change your fuel filter regardless anyway, and have a look in your filter bowl, make sure there's no glitter in there. When I say glitter, I mean little metal particles. If there's one or two little bits in there, don't worry. If there's lots of little metal particles in there, then you do want to worry, because then you have got a problem. But <clears throat> we've checked our fuel filter, Let's say it is completely black. That could well be your answer, right there. Nice and simple. A fuel filter which cost a few bucks, job done, your car's fixed. Put a filter in it, run it up the road, and if the problem doesn't come back, that's it, done. Chances are it probably isn't the filter, and we'll have to move on, but I can tell you, we've had numerous cases now where the filters are blocked, and obviously the fuel can't get through the filter properly and give enough fuel to the high pressure pump to feed the fuel rail. And that's been the problem all along because it hasn't been serviced properly. So that's it. Let's assume the filter is now clean and it wasn't black to start with. So now we've got bigger problems. So the second problem, we're getting a little bit more technical now. What you have to do now is what's called a fuel injector leak off test. Now anybody can do this, you can do it yourself. <laughs> All you need to do is go to McDonald's and get, I'd say, four of them little orange squash bottles and go and get yourself some washer pipe. You can pull off the leak off pipes off your diesel fuel injectors. And believe me, you don't need to go and buy a kit for this. I'm not actually joking when I say get the little bottles, the squash bottles from McDonald's because you can use them. You get them four little bottles like that and you get some windscreen washer pipe, drill a hole in the lid of the bloody bowl, put your windscreen washer pipe into the, into the lid, 
so it drops into here a little bit. And then the other end of the washer pipe, you just push it directly into your fuel injector where the leak off pipe will be. You don't need an adapter or nothing, you just push the washer pipe straight into the hole of the injector in each one. So you've got four pipes coming off four injectors into four little bowls. Then you start your car up and you observe the fuel coming along them pipes. Now it should be going do, 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 along the pipe, along the washer pipe, nice and slow. If you have one or two injectors where the fuel is coming along the pipe quite fast and then it runs into the bottle and starts ru literally running into the bottle, then your injector's knackered. And what's happening now, and this is very common on these engines, I know 75,000 miles isn't a lot, an injector should last a lot longer than that, but I have had quite a lot of these injectors play up at low mileages. And what they do is, they send too much fuel, something inside the injector gets weak, the springs or whatever, it gets weak and it sends too much fuel back to the fuel tank. And the high pressure fuel pump, which is just a pump, it just pumps, okay, it's pumping fuel into the fuel rail. The fuel rail has to maintain a certain pressure. If the injector is leaking too much fuel back to the tank when you're under load, when you're accelerating, the flipping fuel pump cannot deliver enough fuel into the fuel rail to keep the pressure that it's supposed to be at. So the fuel pressure regulator sensor, which is in your fuel rail, reads that, reads that there's low fuel pressure and that's what puts your car into mint mode. Simple as that. It's, it's saying, hey ECU, the fuel pressure in the fuel rail isn't what it should be, it's too low. So the ECU says, aha, I'm going to put the car into limp mode to save the engine. So there you go. Then that's it. You, all you do is replace one or two of the injectors that are leaking off too much. The only thing is, you probably have to take this to a garage to do this job because you might not know what you're looking at anyway and you, you probably don't want to go down the route of replacing the injector. So <laughs> it's, it's one of them things, if you've got a good mechanic who knows at least how to change a fuel injector, all of what I'm saying can be quite easy to do. But let's say for argument's sake on this particular car that the fuel injectors are all okay, they're all leaking off very small amounts of fuel down the fuel pipe. They're not pissing down the fuel, then washer pipes fast and into the bottles. And as I, actually, before I go on any further, when I'm talking about this leak off test, you've got your four bottles lined up and you've got the washer pipes going into the bottles. When the engine's running, the fuel comes down them washer pipes and into the bottles. You're supposed to measure over a amount of time how much fuel goes into these bottles. But generally speaking, you normally have one, two at best, injectors leaking off badly. They will fill the bottle up quite quickly. You can see the fuel level rise as the fuel's going in. And the other, the other bottles will be sort of like empty or only have a tiny bit of fuel in them. So that'll give you a good indicator. If you, got, if you end up after, after two minutes of one bottle which is three quarters full and the other three bottles are a quarter full, then you know that that one bottle that's three quarters full is your problem and that's the injector you've got to change. That would be the answer. That is kind of like 90% of the time it's an injector. Now there is another scenario here which I'm going to point out now which it could be because life isn't easy and nothing is straightforward and there are always twists and turns. So let's assume that your fuel filter was perfectly fine, you've done a fuel injector leak off test and they're all perfectly fine. Where do you go from here? Now as I said earlier, when you looked in the fuel filter bowl, was there any glitter in there? If there was a lot of glitter in there, it's your high pressure fuel pump is faulty. But let's assume there was no glitter, there was no metal particles in your fuel filter bowl. And yeah. Your fuel filter is fine, your injectors are fine. What else could it be? <clears throat> well, on these particular high pressure fuel pumps, and I have made videos to this, there is a little spring that breaks. 
it's held on by three little Torx 30 screws. And generally speaking, when the spring in these high pressure fuel pumps break, the car will break down. It will just take a dump, break down, it won't start again. However, I have now had, over the course of time, I have had umpteen cars that have had a broken spring and you wouldn't even know it. And what happens is, because the spring is broken, it depends on where the spring breaks. If they break in the middle, then that's it, the car will break down. If they just break on one of the ends, then obviously the spring isn't working as effectively as it should be, and it's not pumping enough fuel properly because the spring's broken a bit. And what tends to happen is, the car will run perfectly normally, you wouldn't even know anything was wrong, until you put your foot down under load, and then it will take a dump. Because that spring isn't working properly, it, the fuel pump isn't pumping enough fuel into the bloody injector rail, fuel rail. So that is a last resort, but these are the things that can happen. Is because I've been down these routes and had these problems time and time again, this is the kind of route you've got to go down. So like I'm trying to say here, it is never just a case of guessing and saying, I know exactly what the problem is, it's that, because it might not be. There's always something else it can be. So what I'll do is, I will quickly run over this just to bore you one last time. ECU codes, if you've got low fuel pressure, fuel filter is the absolute first thing you go for. That could be the answer to all your problems. If the fuel filter is clean, do an injector leak off test. If you can't do it yourself, get a mechanic or take it to a garage that know how to do it. And this is the problem, I know there's lots of good garages out there and there's lots of good mechanics out there, but certain garages don't really do this kind of work and they don't like touching diesel injectors. So you need to find someone who at least knows what they're doing when it comes to diesel engines. Have your injector leak off test done. If you've got one or two injectors leaking, too much fuel back to the tank, replace them injectors and pretty much guaranteed that's the end of your problems. If the injectors are all leaking off perfectly fine and there's nothing wrong with them, then I would definitely go straight for the high pressure fuel pump, the spring on it, and you haven't got to take the pump off the engine to actually change that spring. You've only got to like take the cover off the top, three little screws, and you, and you can take the and, and inspect the spring, and there's a good chance it'll be broken. That is how I would go about fixing your car, and I can tell you now. From what, I've, from what you've told me, I'm pretty much sort of like guessing it probably is a fuel filter, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> Some things are quite simple. But anyway, I hope that helps, Frenchie. Obviously, I hope you've got a good mechanic. Well, you probably haven't because you have to take it to other garages to have it looked at. But if you take it to a garage and show them this video, then I will try and link you to other videos I've done where you can actually see the fuel coming down the bloody injector pipe. So I'll, I'll try and dig them out anyway. So I've made videos on, on all this before, but if, if you don't know what you're doing, or this is all new to you, then you have to learn about it. It just takes a little bit of time. So anyway, I hope this helps, and I hope you get your car sorted. If you can't get it sorted, depends where you live. If you brought it to me, I'd certainly look at it, but you probably live too far away, so <laughs> not to worry. I'm sure you'll get it done. 75,000 miles on one of them engines is nothing. It's not a lot. And whatever your problem is, I should think it ain't too much. So anyway, good luck. Let us know how you get on. Thanks a lot for what, guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I will probably do more of these videos. Whenever I get a decent comment, which I think is kind of interesting, I'll try and make a video and answer it. So thanks everybody for watching. See you in the next one. Adios. <laughs>